Well, good evening, Pipe Pals. How you doing? Good to see you. Hmm. Well, still uh, enjoying the Silums. And in honor of the uh, big full moon, the red moon that's rising uh, in our skies uh, on this, the um, 6th or 7th of October, how appropriate it is to be smoking the Silums Red. Continuing the Silum season in uh, this uh, Boot Chocan. It's kind of a calabash style pipe. I just love this pipe. It is it is a pretty thing. And uh, anyway, so got the old smoking jacket on tonight. It's uh, it's actually pretty hot here in Northern California. It's like ninety. It was ninety three degrees today. So I got to be honest with you. Uh, wearing a, a warm uh, flannel <laughs> jacket, even though it's uh, supposed to be uh, autumn fall uh you would think that it would be a little bit cooler and maybe the cool weather's coming and some rain some real rain's coming hopefully hmm. but anyway tonight i just wanted to uh get on here real quick and i was gonna have a few there we go a little bit of a just a little bit of chat here let me get this little thing here down. Because I have discovered something tonight, which I think might almost be a first. Actually, I, I've never seen a pipe presenter talk about the issue I'm going to talk about tonight. And if you have a sensitive stomach, you, you might want to, you might want to, I should put a little warning here. This, this might get a little kind of gross. And I don't want to gross you out. I don't want to freak you out. But something just happened about five, ten minutes ago. That's why I'm even making a video tonight. Hmm. This is probably the first pipe I've had since my last video, which was what last week. And apologize for the the extreme length of that last video. You know, I just got carried away. I was having one of those magical pipe evenings. And, you know, the pipe was just, no, uh, it was just going great. And uh, this seems to be um, going pretty good, too. I just wanted to say a shout out, answer a question. Uh, one of my new uh, viewers, Per Ola from Sweden, beautiful part of Sweden, um, asked a question asked a couple of questions but I think I'll try to answer this question for him he said uh, do you need to have a a pipe for each tobacco you smoke well no not really I mean I I mean there are some people that probably do and if you're one of those people and you know like lately um, I have been smoking pretty much exclusively yes the Silum's red with this Beautiful reddish, burnished, uh, rusticated uh, boot shook I, I think there's an advantage to doing that, as I said in my last video. And again, I'm, you know, to be very honest with you all, I'm, I'm not a, I would never consider myself truly an expert or a connoisseur of uh, pipe smoking. I, 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 um, I, I've tried different things. And um, some things um, I've shared with you. Um, uh, so to answer Parola's question simply is that, um, you know, you could have a, because he, he was saying, he was saying, I have, you know, uh, you know, he was, he was kind of th thinking that, gosh, you know, this could get really uh, kind of a, you know, an expensive hobby if you, let's say you have 10 tobaccos and you should have a pipe for each tobacco. Well, that's, that's not necessarily the case. What I would recommend, and again, I'm sure other people more uh, knowledgeable than myself, would probably say, look, you know, there are like three or four basic blends 
Uh, you know, there's aromatics, there's English, there's Orientals, and there's uh, um, a, a Balkan, a Balkan, uh, Balkan Sobrani type blends. So, you know, each four of those, you know, and there's, a, I guess, some of those, so there's a Perique blend. Uh, so, so the thing is that what you want to do is, is kind of like say, well, I'm going to have an English kind of a English type pipe um, or and uh, maybe an aromatic pipe. And if you're really into, say, Orientals, you might want to have one pipe just for that, those kinds of tobaccos, more like the heavy Latakias, you know. Now, of course, English has lots, a lot of Latakia, too. But uh, but uh, and then then the Balkan, the Balkan blends. OK. And there's probably there's probably actually other blends, I, I you know, but but then you can go and get straight Virginias, you can get straight Burleys, you can get straight um, oh again Latakias, you know, you you can get you can get some pretty standalone basic tobaccos and even try just a straight Burley if you wanted to do that. Um, mostly tobaccos are a blend of different things with a little bit more of a heavier blends of, you know, uh, you know, like they have, you know, they, you can even blend your own, actually, you can get uh, blending blends, I think, maybe from Cornell and Deal, uh, maybe pipes and cigars, I think they do have just basic bulk blends of the individual, you know, you could probably get a, a, a bag of Perique, you get a bag of Burley, you get a bag of Virginia, you get a bag of uh, Latakias, and, you know, you could kind of mix and match your own, make your own you know, uh, blends if you want. Um, but again, there's there's just there's other ways of curing the tobaccos. And again, I, I don't know all of the the uh, the artistry and the science that goes into procuring and curing tobaccos. So, but but some tobaccos are just you know they're very unique. Um, some of them, uh, like I was talking about last video, they can be cased. They can have a you know a topping on them. That gives them an extra flavor like the cherry and the berry and the vanillas and the chocolates and things of that nature. So anyway, uh, you know, you don't have to have a whole lot of pipes to enjoy different blends. Now, as I've been talking, I let this pipe go out and I'm going to probably sneeze here in just a minute. <laughs> okay, but uh, why I'm here tonight is because of this pipe and what's in it. This is again my Sheraton. I've been kind of going between. Again, this is kind of a the the uh, this is a good example. I would say oh, cross pipes like you know skull skull and crossbones. You know skull and cross pipes. You know. Ooh, there's a there's a logo for you. Okay. Um, this obviously is smoking more of an aromatic tobacco, and actually I I can't say that the next tobacco I'm gonna be well maybe maybe after I'll tell you what what's going on here you might say you might we might choose to say it differently but uh, I'm smoking in this pipe here my Sheraton tonight a very stout tobacco and then I want to check something out here before I tell you what I'm smoking here Well, I wouldn't be able to see it now. I did bring my magnifying glass. Okay. So what I'm smoking in this pipe here, very stout, full-flavored tobacco, and it is Haunted Bookshop. I always like smoking Haunted Bookshop, certainly in, in the more autumn months, Halloween, October. And as I told you, I had... Uh, two cellared blends. One of these was stoved. This might have been the stoved one. I'm thinking this probably was the stoved one. And this one here was the non-stoved one. I'm going to show you that right there. Now, if you can see the consistency at the bottom of that tobacco, kind of looks more like fine coffee grounds as opposed to this one here which is very very ribbon you know cut shag cut ribbon cut whatever you know rolled you know, it's a 
ready rubbed there okay now as I told you in my last video where's my pipe lighter there good old haunted bookshop definitely an acquired taste it is a pretty much a stand-up burly and if you like burlies you're gonna love haunted bookshop mm-hmm there's just like nothing like it folks um, what three years ago when uh, matches H60 started talking about haunted bookshop I'll tell you what it just intrigued me and I thought gosh there's got to be something kind of, well, I didn't even dare say extra special about Haunted Bookshop. It's just one of those, it is the most unique tobacco that I have ever tasted and smoked. Now, I'm not saying I would give it a 10 or a 9. It's, what I'm, I guess what I would say is I would give it a 7 or an 8, 7.58, because it is a tobacco that I had to kind of learn to appreciate. If you like the flavor of kind of stout burly, you know, sort of like French roast. I mean, I'm, I'm comparing. So, you know, there's coffee and then there's French roast, okay? And French roast is a very more, is more, shall we say, stronger, more full-bodied coffee. And some people probably don't care for that strong of a coffee. And, and Haunted Bookshop definitely is a very strong tobacco. I mean, in its flavor, and its its taste character, its nicotine punch, it's, it's just a strong tobacco. So anyway, that being said, um, I've had this bag, and then I put it into these tins from about three years ago. One I stoved, I actually put it in the stove, and... Uh, baked it for maybe an hour 45 minutes I can't remember now and there was a guy who recommended um, stoving your uh, your tobaccos and then it you know, when it would seal the the, the uh, you know it would seal vacuum seal the uh, the tobacco there and uh, anyway so that being said as I told you I think the last video this one here, Okay, uh, this one here smells just like Haunted Bookshop, the way it was, you know, when I first got it, you know, three years ago. And it still has that moist, perfect consistency of Haunted Bookshop. But this... It had a very ammonia smelling, as I said, the hint of road apples, okay? Horsey poo-poo. It, it stinks. <laughs> I'll just be honest. It kind of stinks. It's, I mean, all tobacco has a has a very pungent smell. I mean, even even the aromatics they have they have a real strong aroma. But this, uh, for some reason, I was thinking, why is it smelling a little more rank uh, than it normally does? I found out why. <laughs> now, a few of you probably already know what I'm going to say. But those of you who don't know what I'm about to say, I hope you're sitting down because it gets a little, gets a little, ew, makes you feel kind of, I feel kind of creepy going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. So I got, uh, I, I, and as you can see, I, 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 um, I fished some of it out. I poured some of it out on my uh, other uh, desk in there. I started loading my Sheridan. And as I looked down, the little pile of tobacco. I know, first I noticed it seemed to be very fine, powdery almost, almost like snuff. I'm going, that doesn't make sense. Why would this be more like a powdery snuff consistency almost? And this one here, still the same good old Haunted Bookshop consistency. What's, what's going on with that? Well, I began to find out Real quick, when I looked down at the little pile of tobacco that I had poured out to load my pipe, I just put a little bit of pipe in because I noticed the tobacco was very fine, and I'm going, well, okay. So, put my first layer in there, and I went back to 
scoop up another, you know, little pinch of tobacco, put it in there. And as I looked down, I saw these little brown things crawling. It's alive! It's alive! It, it freaked me out. All these little brown bugs. That's right, little tobacco bugs were crawling around inside the brown tobacco. And I think little living organisms living inside this little ecosphere here. Well, when you eat things, you got to evacuate things. And that's, my friends, is the reason why that has an ammonia smell is because there's little bug poopoos inside the tobacco. So the tobacco, somehow some little bugs got in there and they start, they just, they're just, they're just loving it. So I'm probably just going to take this and just pitch it tomorrow morning and say, au revoir, sayonara, Al Peter saying, no, not Al Peter saying, I don't want to see him again. <laughs> anyway, the bottom line is they're going bye-bye, okay? But anyway, so that's why this particular one had this a really strong, uh, you know, rank ammonia smelling essence to it. And I just thought, well, it just aged tobacco. Well, something just told me there was something not quite right with that. Because I've had aged tobaccos before. And they will take on more of a fermented uh, aroma. Almost kind of like a, like actually, like wine. You know, a nice fermented wine or something. But not a, not a real pungent uh, ammonia smell. And so, if you're wondering, did I keep that first layer from that? No, <laughs> I, I don't think that would be good. Uh, I don't know about smoking insects. You know, I, don't, I just don't know if that would be a healthy thing. <laughs> I know tobacco itself isn't probably the most healthiest thing in the world, but still, I don't know if I want to, you know, be smoking something that could truly be more toxic than what it should be. You know, so. So anyway, that's my little offering tonight, and I just thought I'd ask if anybody else has experienced tobacco bugs. Okay. Well, this is Holy Smoking Pie Padre saying thanks for watching, and I hope you're having a wonderful evening wherever you're at, and uh, let's toast the moon.